Josh, Josh Shapiro, and the many special guests that are here today. From Layuna, we have Philip Amaris, President and Business Manager of the Labor's District Council. We have Mark Ferrari, Minister and Training Director of the Labor's Education and Training Fund. And we have Mandy Daughtry, Apprentice. Yes. And from the Pennsylvania Building Trades, we have Rob Bear, President. And if Rob can stand up. From the Pittsburgh Regional Building Trades, we have Greg Bernarding. From the, from the Allegheny Fayette Central Labor Council, we have Darren Kelly. From Steamfitters Local 449, we have Kenny Broadbent. We also have in attendance the Sheet Metal Workers Local 12. IBEW Local 5, IBEW 3rd District, Ironworkers Local 66, Steamfitters Local 449, Eastern Atlantic Regional Council of Carpenters, and last but not least, Ryan Boyer, who is also handles Pennsylvania for the Labor's International, He's handling that accident today in Baltimore where the bridge collapsed, so he could not be here today, but I want to acknowledge him as well. And from Butler County, we have Mark Gordon, Chief of Economic Development and Planning. And from Butler County, the Chamber of Commerce, we have Jordan Grady, President. And, and from the Lindy Group, we have Vince Titino. And from the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, we have Senator Jay Costa. Right. We have Secretary Mike Carroll from the Department of Transportation. We have Secretary Reggie McNeil from the Department of General Services. And we have Secretary Nancy Walker, Department of Labor and Industry. And I want to thank everybody for being here as well. Of all the states I have in the Mid-Atlantic region, Pennsylvania construction industry has an especially impressive history of creating opportunities for local workers and businesses. And now Pennsylvania is going to do that well into the future through project labor agreements, thanks to Governor Shapiro's leadership. <laughs> Governor Shapiro does not just see a new road, a new building, a new bridge being built, or an airport being built. He sees each project as a lifeline for Pennsylvania construction workers and their families. The combination of opportunity along with the training and apprenticeship that happens here is a pathway to the middle class. It takes an incredible team to pave, our, to, pave, to pave those pathways, and I am proud to introduce the great leader of Western Pennsylvania, and now we call it the Pennsylvania District Council, of our team, from our, general, from our District Council, Philip Amaris. <laughs> Thank you, thank you very much. Uh, first of all, we're honored today to have uh, Governor Shapiro at our training center. Uh, can't say enough about what he's done. He's a man of his word, and today, his action today with the PLAs absolutely shows his commitment to labor, commitment to growing our state, and commitment to putting our members out to work. Uh, this has been a long road. There was a lot of obstacles on it, but Governor Shapiro stood strong the whole time and told us, look, we'll get it done. And today, he got it done. And we can't thank you enough for this, because it's going to, we can't say enough about it. Uh, in our training center here in, in Saxonburg, we offer over 40 classes that are in the construction industry. And my colleagues from the carpenters, the steamfitters, and all the other crafts that are here, their training centers do the you know, exact same thing. These are lifetime jobs. You know, our members are skilled workers. They come out here, they get their training. It's a beautiful alternative for someone that doesn't want to go into school and so forth. The apprenticeship program that Governor Shapiro has done and the finances he provided, we couldn't be as successful as we are without his administration. So again, I just want to thank everyone for being here. We are honored to have him here and to have everyone here for this monumental event. And next, I'd like to introduce uh, Secretary, where do you go? Reggie, right <laughs> you're right here. There you are. Hey, good morning, everyone. Morning. And so I'm Reggie McNeil, the Secretary of the Department of General Services. 
and I want to extend my gratitude to Philip Ameris, uh, President of the Labor District Council of Western Pennsylvania, Vince Tutino, President of Lindy Paving, Kenny Broadbent, Business Manager of Steam Pitters Local 449, and Apprentice Mandy, um, <laughs> for your unwavering commitment and support uh, to the infrastructure development in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. At DGS, we oversee essential functions that ensure the smooth execution of capital projects and services across the Commonwealth. From soliciting bids and managing contracts to enforcing compliance and promoting diversity, our department plays a pivotal role in shaping Pennsylvania's economic landscape. Today, I'm proud to say that DGS can continue to remain dedicated to this administration's mission in fostering more opportunities for Pennsylvanians. By prioritizing the use of project labor agreements and public contracting processes when appropriate, recognizing the urgency and complexity of forthcoming capital projects, PLAs can serve as a vital tool to ensure timely, cost-effective, and high-quality project completion. Skilled labor is crucial for rebuilding infrastructure, and Governor Shapiro's directive to incorporate PLAs can facilitate the efficient and timely completion of our capital projects. Our commitment at DGS is to leverage PLAs whenever appropriate to ensure that Pennsylvanians capital projects are executed effectively and inclusively, utilizing the skilled labor to meet project timeliness and deliver quality outcomes for our residents. Serving Pennsylvanians and strengthening our partnerships with businesses is paramount at DGS. By prioritizing transparency, accountability, and integrity in our procurement practices, we build trust and attract top-tier vendors that are eager to work within the Commonwealth. But our commitment doesn't stop there. We also recognize the importance of driving innovation, enhancing productivity, and expediting project completion. Often, capital projects involve strict and urgent timelines for a litany of reasons, and PLAs are a powerful tool in meeting deadlines. They help ensure that projects are completed on time and in the best interest of Pennsylvanians, creating jobs, and considering cost effectiveness, efficiency, quality, and safety. Incorporating more PLAs is the next step to rebuilding the Commonwealth's infrastructure, growing our workforce, and paving the way to a brighter, more efficient future for our Pennsylvanians. And thank you. And now it is my honor to introduce top tier vendor who the Commonwealth has counted on when timeliness counts the most, Mr. Vince Tutino, <laughs> President of Lindy Paver. Of course, I'm Vince Satino. I'm the president of uh, the Lindy Group. Before I get started, I'd like to thank Pennsylvania Laborers uh, for hosting this in Butler County. Um, and I would like to thank Governor Josh Shapiro, Secretary Carroll, and Secretary McNeil. Your efforts, uh, your efforts to make this priority for your administration is, is second to none. Uh, and it has not gone unnoticed. The relationships between the Commonwealth, the contractors, and organized laborers has never been stronger. We thank you uh, for that in the governor's office. I started Lindy Paving in 1979 with five uh, employees and myself with the intention to grow. The first thing we did, we organized as a Pennsylvania corporate uh, corporation, and the second uh, thing we became signatory with all local uh, unions at that time. It was 25 years, when I was 25 years old, I joined the Labor's Union in 1058, and I'm pretty sure I still have their original union card. <laughs> and as I said, with the intention to grow, well, we did. From the five union employees, in 1979 to 1,500 union employees today. <laughs> These 1,500 skilled workers provide the utmost quality and efficiencies that Lindy is recognized for. 
The Lindy employees were part of the Shell Cracker PLA for seven years, starting in 2015 and ending in 2022. This $14 billion project definitely had to follow the criteria of particular need, urgency, complexity of product, and the lack of available qualified labor. Lindy's labor force not only helped build the Shell Cracker project, they built Lindy Paving. Thank you. Thank you, Kenny. Sorry, Vince, I'll introduce myself, buddy, but you did a good job. <laughs> you need no intro. You did a good job. <laughs> He's a 1058 member. <laughs> PLAs, project labor agreements. Project labor agreements ensure that things are done professionally, safely, and done by the people that are best in the business, and that's why the governor's in favor of PLAs. The governor that believes in working people. But first, let me mention, I'd be remiss if I didn't say what an honor, the first time I've been here, to be in the laborer's house. <laughs> the laborers are one of the strongest unions in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, and politically, no one is stronger than them. <laughs> and it's a pleasure to be up here with my dear friend, one of the strongest labor leaders in the Commonwealth, the President of the District Council, Philip Ameris. <laughs> but the governor believes PLAs are going to ensure that the jobs are done professionally. The governor was professional when he was in the legislature. He was professional when he was the Attorney General, one of the best Attorney Generals we ever had, making sure workers' rights were protected. And he sure is professional now as the governor of the great Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. <laughs> the governor believes that PLAs will make it professional. The building trades are the best at what they do. Nobody knows that better when I-95 went down and the governor called on the Philadelphia building trades to get that facility, that bridge overpass up in record quicker time than they ever thought it would be done. Because he believed in the building trades. You wouldn't hire a nurse that wasn't certified to take care of your mother. You wouldn't hire an accountant that wasn't a CPA. You wouldn't hire a lawyer that didn't pass the bar exam. Why would you hire somebody to do your construction? in your commonwealth, on your schools, in your office buildings, your hospitals, your universities, that wasn't a professional, that didn't go through an apprenticeship, that wasn't the best at what they do. That's what the building trades do. <laughs> the people need to be reminded that the building trades not only teach apprenticeships, and Mandy's going to be coming up here shortly. She's a second year labor apprentice. All the education comes for free. All the training is roughly a dollar off every worker's back goes into an apprentice committee, and that's how we pay for the instructors, the training directors, the material to, tr to teach our people to be the best at whatever they do, whether an electrician, a labor, carpenter, a millwright, iron worker, boiler maker, steam fitter. We're the best at what we do. <laughs> so the PLAs help ensure that you're getting professionals. And that's what you want on all these buildings to be done professionally, safely, on time, and, with bu and within budget. And that's what the governor who supports working people is ensuring by encouraging people to use PLAs in his commonwealth. <laughs> so our next speaker, second year apprentice in the Labor's Union. The building trades isn't perfect. But nobody tries for more diversity than the building trades. Our competition, our non-signatory contractors, don't worry about diversity like the trades do. So who better than have a second-year apprentice out of the Labor's Apprenticeship Organization to speak next and then introduce the governor? Please welcome Mandy Doherty. <laughs> I'm 
Mandy if you haven't heard. <laughs> um, my name is Mandy Daughtry. I'm a wife and a mother of eight-month-old twins. I'm a second-year labor apprentice and a proud woman in construction. I left the healthcare industry after 14 years when I got accepted into my apprenticeship program. I left that job and now I'm working on building a career in construction. Leaving, the, leaving was easy when the apprenticeship program provided a more meaningful and engaging work, better wages, and better health care. The education in the classroom is excellent, and the training on the job has been phenomenal. The camaraderie between brothers and sisters in the trades is second to none. I am so thankful for the endless opportunities to learn new skills while earning great wages and having great health care. Having the support of Governor Shapiro and the state of Pennsylvania on future construction projects is important because it will help future apprentices and future workers continue to have the opportunity to earn good wages to provide for our families. I would now like to introduce Governor Josh Shapiro. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Mandy, you're awesome, and I want to say thank you uh, for not just being here today. Thank you for the important training you're undergoing and the incredible work you're going to do building Pennsylvania's infrastructure. But I want to say thank you for encouraging other women and girls to go into construction. You are an inspiration to them, and we are grateful for your leadership. Thank you. <clears throat> So it's good to be back in Butler County, and it is especially good to be in a house of labor, especially the Labor's Education and Training Center. And I want to thank my dear friend and your leader, Philip Ameris, for having me here today. I love coming to these training facilities because what you're teaching here, what folks are learning here, is helping us grow our commonwealth, is helping us be more competitive. It's helping make sure people have safe, healthy communities to live in. The laborers do that so well, and this is where you are learning those skills, and I'm grateful for the opportunity for more Pennsylvanians to now see what goes on here. From repairing our roads and bridges, to building homes and businesses, to establishing critical infrastructure like electricity, water, high-speed internet that connects and powers our communities. It is the building trades of Pennsylvania who do that hard work, that hands-on work that strengthen our infrastructure and that grows our economy. Hear me loud and clear on this. I respect that work and the people that do it. I respect all of you as you pursue your path to success, put food on the table for your families, and build a wonderful lifestyle for you and your loved ones. I respect your shared commitment to getting stuff done here in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. So that's why I chose here in Saxonburg, in Butler County, in this laborers hall, to be with you today and announce that I am issuing a new directive to all Commonwealth agencies for the appropriate use of project labor agreements, oh. or PLA. That's right. Now listen, I've got to thank a few folks on our team who have been working on this diligently over the course of the last year. You heard from Secretary McNeil, the man who leads the Department of General Services. Thank you, Secretary McNeil, for your outstanding work. I want to thank I want to thank Secretary Nancy Walker from the Department of Labor and Industry, who is not only doing a hell of a job at LNI, remember, she was my lead prosecutor in holding Hall Baker accountable for the millions that they ripped off from Pennsylvania workers. And I want to thank Secretary Carroll, who leads PennDOT 
who is doing more road and bridge projects than ever before across the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. He's a man who understands the power of PLAs and the incredible work you do. Thank you, Secretary <laughs> Carroll. And let me just tell you, and Philip knows this, we would not be here today without two key members of my senior staff, and they join us here today, Tori Shriver and Amanda Warren. Thank you both so very much for your work. For those of you who don't know, PLAs are agreements sometimes negotiated in the construction industry for major infrastructure projects. You see, they lay out a set of terms and conditions for a specific construction project that both employers and workers have to agree to upfront before any work begins. PLAs have a lot of benefits, not just for the people doing the work, but for the taxpayers of Pennsylvania. You see, they guarantee a steady, consistent supply of workers with the right skills to get the job done. They include no strike provisions that ensures work will continue without interruption. And they set wages and benefits for all workers up front. And they can even include things like workforce development initiatives to help train workers on the job. So we are preparing the pipeline of workers we need for tomorrow. And importantly, they can require local hiring, even for out-of-state contractors, so we will know that the people doing the work here in Pennsylvania are Pennsylvanians, and we think that is critically important. And I know there's some out there that might criticize a PLA, and they often result in major construction projects, I think it's important to note, that get done on time or even early or on budget or under budget. And so for those who look to criticize it, they have to face that fact. Now listen, I want you to know I'm not new to this. This is critically important to me and has been throughout my public service career. I've seen firsthand how workers, government, and taxpayers can benefit when we work together to implement responsible contracting and procurement. Way back when, when I was the head of the Montgomery County Commissioners, we adopted a new procurement policy in my first month in office that included a standard of responsibility for construction contractors. And I'm here to tell you, it worked. And it got things done on time and oftentimes under budget. In plain terms, what we did in Montgomery County is we decided that when the county was evaluating a potential construction contractor, that we should be able to consider some common sense practical questions like whether or not they follow basic labor laws and whether or not they provide benefits to help their employees, our friends and our neighbors who are doing this work to pay their bills and support their families while working on a county contract. You see, that was a priority for us then. Delivering contracts to folks who take care of their employees we think is just common sense and we think it is the responsible thing to do. Responsible contracting is something I prioritized back in Montgomery County, and it is something I'm continuing to prioritize now as your governor across the entire Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. And so the directive that I will sign in just one moment requires Commonwealth agencies to evaluate and implement the use of PLAs on Commonwealth projects wherever possible, beginning April 1st. That's just in a few days. This isn't one of those things that's going to kick in a long time down the road. Beginning April 1st, agencies will use PLAs on future projects every time when a project is urgent or complex or there's a lack of available qualified labor to work on that project. Moving forward, agencies will evaluate every single capital project to determine if it meets those three criteria. And if it does, now they will use a PLA here in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. <laughs> By following this roadmap that I will lay out, we'll use more PLAs and get more quality projects done with skilled labor on time and on budget. And I want to be very clear about something. No one is being shut out. You heard from one of our leading contractors in Pennsylvania a moment ago, Vince Titino, who does outstanding work. 
He understands you need to have fair competition across the board. No one will be shut out. All contractors will be able to bid on these projects, and no contractor will be precluded from getting a chance to do this work. And for anybody wondering what do PLAs actually accomplish, well, let me give you just one example. Under Secretary Carroll's leadership, when a portion of I-95 literally collapsed in Philadelphia last summer, my administration implemented a PLA project that helped us get that highway reopened in just 12 days, thanks to the hands of skilled labor from the Philadelphia building trades. In the midst of that catastrophic event, shutting down a road that carried 176,000 cars and trucks every day, we saw a proud and diverse group of over 200 members of the building trades, working quite literally 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Through the heat, through the rain, a whole bunch of dads even worked on Father's Day. They showed not just Pennsylvania, but they showed America, when the eyes of the nation were on us, what the building trades can accomplish when they work hard and they work together. These women and men were brought into the project from the start, and under that PLA, they showed that union labor knows how to get the job done with those key terms and conditions laid out up front. The taxpayers of Pennsylvania benefited from their service. We came together on that roadway, as we do on projects all across Pennsylvania every day. We fostered a culture of collaboration, and we showed that we can do big things again in this Commonwealth if we believe in one another, and if we believe and invest in skilled labor right here in Pennsylvania. That's an example of what a PLA can accomplish. And I think we need more of that here in Pennsylvania. And so this new directive is an important first step toward implementing more PLAs and getting these benefits for the taxpayers, for the workers, and for our entire Commonwealth. Now listen, this directive is super important. But the best thing we can do is if we enshrine this in law and pass a PLA into law here in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. I asked Senator Acosta to join us here today. He's the leader of the state Senate Democrats. He has been a champion of labor and of PLAs for many, many years. Senator Costa knows just how critically important it is to pass this bill, and we don't have to worry about where he'll be on it. And I know, and he knows this as well, there's a whole lot of folks in that building in the Capitol that love to talk a good game about supporting women and men who are doing this backbreaking work on our roadways and our communities every day. They love to talk a good game about y'all making a good wage and getting good benefits. They love to talk a good game about the taxpayers benefiting from the skills that you develop at a training center here, or one like Kenny runs. Well, you know what? It's time for them to stop talking a good game and join Senator Costa and pass a PLA bill in the legislature. And let me tell you something. When they pass that bill and they put it on my desk, I'll come back to a union hall and sign it into law here in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. I want to thank Senator Costa for his leadership. And until they pass that bill, this directive is going to make sure that we prosper here in this Commonwealth, that we grow our economy, that we build big things again here in Pennsylvania, that we can create real opportunity for Pennsylvania workers. You see, I think Pennsylvania should be a place where everyone has the freedom to chart their own course and the opportunity to succeed. And this directive, which I'm about to sign, this is going to help make sure more people have opportunity in Pennsylvania, more people have freedom, and we have more success all across this Commonwealth. Thank you all very much. God bless you. Now let's go sign this directly. Thank you.
for you, Jenny. Thank you so much. Let's come on back up here and see if there's any questions from the media. We got to make sure the lawyers get this, so we do this. Where's Secretary McNeil? Make sure that happens now. So. Good. All right, if there's any questions from the media, Philip will be happy to answer them for you. <laughs> you ready? Good. No yeah. questions. All right. <laughs> yes, good. Okay. Do you have any communication with Cleveland Cliffs in relation to the DOE mandate that, um, this is kind of unrelated, but um, that could put them in a bad spot, let's say? I recognize that um, the administration in Washington had proposed some rules that would have been, frankly, devastating to the more than 1,000 workers at Cleveland Cliffs here in Butler County. And um, we engaged on that issue, spoke directly to the Energy Secretary, uh, directly to members of the Biden administration and let them know just how uh, concerning I thought those rules were and the speed within which they wanted to implement them and the devastating effect that would have on workers. I want to say thank you to the Biden administration for listening uh, and for stopping those rules from going into effect. And as a result, we saved over a thousand jobs, union jobs, at that Cleveland Cliffs facility. That means. <laughs> That means those workers are going to continue to be able to put food on the table uh, for their families. They're going to continue to be able to prosper here in Pennsylvania. And I want to thank them uh, for the incredible and important work they do supplying energy here in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania and all across this Commonwealth. Their jobs are protected, and we're grateful for the Biden administration uh, for stepping up and, and hearing our calls. announced uh, five, $575 million for Cleveland Cliffs specifically, 75 of which 75 million of that is going to the plant in Butler. Uh, you know, did you have any say at that? Was that something you were working on? Was that, or was that the DOE coming down and saying, we you work, know what, we're investing? We work really closely with the Department of Energy and Secretary Granholm has Pennsylvania in her sights. We're constantly uh, leaning in and asking them for more resources to be able to create more jobs and more opportunity to do more uh, creating energy, particularly clean, renewable energy here in Pennsylvania. Uh, and the Department of Energy and the Biden administration has been all in in helping us do that work in Pennsylvania. We're grateful to them. All right. Philip, you're off the hook, my man. Thanks, everybody.